Here in Scotland, we've got 11,000 members operating in varying disciplines from building surveying, planning and development, rural, geomatics, commercial and residential property, quantity surveying, project management, and it goes on. Uh, and I'm very proud to say that uh, in June, I'll become the chairman, uh, the chairman of RICS Scotland, and only the, the second building surveyor to meet uh, the institution in Scotland. But of course, GLM isn't just an RICS regulator firm. We're uh, an RIP and an RIAS uh, registered firm too. So today, David Johnson, who you'll hear from in a minute, uh, leads our architectural team, and Greg Maddox, who's here as well, um, heads up our building surveying and project management teams. Together, we've taken on countless projects all over the UK, very small to about as large as novice um, uh, clients or experienced developers uh, are likely to take on. Uh, and we've been at it for 20 years, and in the case of David, 30 plus. Um, so over the years, we find that all too often uh, clients come to projects with a set of assumptions that bear no resemblance to established processes. Programs like Grand Designs uh, have done much to educate people in, in design, but they've also done much to confuse people about uh, project management and construction costs. And increasingly, we get asked to get involved with clients who start off in completely the wrong uh, direction. We feel that with a knowledgeable nudge in the right direction, at just the right moment, we could turn the building process from what's uh, often a grueling experience into one that's uh, a very rewarding one. So this has been our impetus for uh, our seminar series, Grand Designs, Not Grand Disasters. It'll be a three-part series, and we'll, uh, with our case studies, we'll demystify things like design and build, project monitoring, architecture, building surveying, contract administration, construction management, project management, and turnkey. But today, uh, in part one of our series, uh, uh, in which uh, our directors, David Gibbon and David Johnson, and our guest speaker, financial advisor, uh, Hazel Brown, of Carbon and Financial Partners, will walk you through the early stages of building projects. Now, just a little bit of housekeeping before we, uh, before we start. I don't believe there's going to be a fire alarm uh, test today, so if it, uh, it does go off, we follow the exits as quickly as we can out into the, the marshalling area, uh, but there'll be uh, staff from RICA Scotland to guide us. Um, the toilets are outside um, as, uh, in the foyer, and I think we've got a, a card, so if you, if you need to go fish out. Um, I could ask you all to uh, turn your mobiles to silent, but by all means tweet. We've put our hashtags up there, so uh, feel free to tweet and, and to follow us as well. So, Without uh, any, any more, um, could I uh, introduce our first speaker, David Gibbon. I'm very happy to introduce David. He's been my business partner for over 20 years, and with 40 years of uh, experience as a, a chartered building spare and a conservation credit professional, he's one of the country's leading experts on period and listed buildings. 
He's regularly called upon for uh, pre-acquisition advice, including guidance on the economic and sustainable reuse of historic buildings. He's constantly challenging conventional wisdom, looking for better ways to do things and to deliver projects, and always refusing to accept the status quo where it's not uh, in the client's best interest. So, David, over to you. Thank you. Um, I start off um, slightly intimidated by the fact that I know that I, I, I didn't quite realise what this audience was going to consist of, but I've spoken to various people who are the architects and probably know an awful lot more about this whole process than we do, so um, bear with us. Um, there are, I, I called my talk... Um, yeah, I called, I called my talk Known Unknowns, um, and I... And I I think this is um, one, of the, one of the better things that Donald Rumsfeld ever said. Um, there are known unknowns. There are things we know that we know. There are known, sorry, there are known knowns. There are things that we know that we know. There are known unknowns, that is to say, there are things that we don't know. But there are also unknown unknowns. These are the things that we don't know we don't know. I thought, I think, I. I've always loved that one. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's really good fun, actually. Um, it seems to me that there is a remnant of almost medieval thinking when it comes to existing buildings. Um, the, the, um, the rat here I have is a sort of symbol of the bubonic plague, which beset our cities, and people thought it was a visitation from God. There was, you would have plagues from time to time to punish our wickedness. Um, fires as well, the, the Great Fire of London. People thought that fires just happened, there was nothing much you could do about them. Um, and then uh, another John Snow came along and um, removed the handle from the pump in, um, um, I forgot where in London, um, Broad Street, um, where uh, a cholera epidemic had been traced back to. He plotted on a map the various um, incidences of, of cholera and traced it back to that pump and took the handle off it and, uh, and, and, and was said to have stopped the, stopped the spread of cholera on that occasion in 1854. It seems to me that to this day we still have a, a notion about dry rot, that, it, uh, that it's sort of magical, it kind of comes out of nowhere. Well, actually, anybody who really knows about this knows that dry rot has a, has a whole biology to it. Um, and it is, in fact, completely predictable. Um, not, not perhaps in, in extent, but in, in cause and, and likelihood. Um, uh, we can we can actually know about dry rot. We can know about fires and how to manage and, and, and prevent and control them. And we can certainly know about public health. Um, I just thought that I would run through one or two sources of information before we before we get into actually looking at the building itself. We can do quite a lot on the internet, and I think the Dictionary of Scottish Architects is a fantastic resource for for old buildings. Not not only listed buildings, but, you know, mostly listed buildings, but buildings built over the last century or so, well, 1840 to 1980, um, there's loads of information in this database. Um, and of course, obviously, the historic buildings listed um, buildings database is another fantastic source of information before you start, very often containing the description, uh, the detailed description, which is quite a, a useful piece of information, rather than twice. The other, another source of information is the SEPA flood maps, um, which I could drill down further into, the, into further detail than that, um, which, uh, which have become much more useful than they were a year or two ago. But going to the subject of, of um, uh, uh, due diligence and pre-acquisition surveys, one of the things that I often find when I'm instructed to do a building survey is that the client says, I only want to know whether it's the building's going to fall down. I'm really not interested in all your guff about you know, the detail of it. Just tell me, is it going to fall down? 
And um, on when we when we did the survey of this particular building on the island of Mull, um, I uh, I said to the chap who eventually bought it, my client, um, yes, it will. Um, it, I, I forgot that I'd said that actually. He, he, um, <laughs> he, he, he came back to me later and, and reminded me of the fact that I told him, yes, it will fall down. I mean, I meant what, what I meant by that was that those those bulbous bits of masonry at the top were not tied to the roof and were on the move, and that if we didn't do something to arrest them, they would fall off, and, and, and you know it was heading that way. Um, uh, and I gave him a pretty detailed account of what was going to be required to get that building into the, the order we eventually got it into. Um, and, and told him, I think, I think I probably told him it's within, I don't know, 20 or 50,000 what it was going to cost to, to do. So, uh, these are, the, the, will it fall down is one small bit of it. And it seems to me that, that you can get, if, if you take the view, which used to be commonplace, I think, in Scotland and Edinburgh, and maybe still is to some extent, that the structural integrity of a building is the main thing uh, that you have to be concerned about, you can lose sight of what matters. Quite often I've seen in the past structural engineers' reports that say, yes, the roof is well formed and properly sized timbers and they're all properly connected, etc., etc. We haven't looked at the roof coverings um, and uh, you'll have to get a specialist in to, to, to confirm whether or not there's rot and decay in the timbers. Well, what, uh, what use is that for a complicated, this is a chosen at random from Google Maps, the Google Earth, the, a, a bit of Edinburgh. That, that, that sort of complexity that you would have in, in a tenemental roof in the new time um, is, um, is surely something worth knowing a bit about. Um, and what you see from standing on the ground is, well, it's zilch, basically. And what you see from the Google map doesn't tell you anything about the detail of it. Now, here's a building that I looked at. This is just one end of it. It goes on. There were 200 windows in this house. And um, the big question is, you know, with this roof, and I think roofs are the most important bit of the building, what, what can we know about it? What can we... What can, we, what can we find out about it? Well, I think you can find it out a great deal by a detailed inspection of it. You can find out when it was done last, whether it's all of a piece, and um, what the makeup is, whether it's got bituminous felt under the slates or breathable membrane or nothing at all, or the slates are bent in line, or you know what kind of nailing it's got and so on. You can turn slates, you can look you can look at the gaps between the sarking boards. There's a, there's a lot of information you can derive about the a roof like this. But for some reason or other, it's, there's a common feeling around the place that this is just magic. You know, the roof's just, you know, it, it can't be known, but it can. This, this thing here, however, was, had been redone in the 1980s. Very elaborate, complicated stuff for around its eaves. But it leaked like a sieve, and giving an idea of what it was going to take and cost to fix that uh, in a pre-acquisition survey. It's tricky, but, but doable in my opinion. I think there's, a, there's an element of what I would call, or what is known as intergenerational um, equity in, in the whole subject of roofs and, and, and buildings generally, passing on to the next generation. This is, this is owned by a client of ours. It's a billiard room on the side of the castle, last bit of thing. And the parents, the previous generation, had put a plastic roof on it, which had comprehensively failed, smashed to smithereens in cold weather. And um, they wanted to do something better. So we talked about all the options, but they were stuck on the idea of doing it in lead and also insulating it, which is tricky. Tricky to do a big insulated lead roof like that, because if you don't get it right, you get condensation on the other side of the lead, you'll get, often you'll turn to white powder. Um, so, um, but the thing about that was that they're looking for the next generation. They don't want to pass a big problem on to the next generation. They want to have something that will really last. And I think that's 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 good. But it, we play past the parcel with groups. Um, you know, Sorry. will it hit this generation or the next? And we have this we have these home reports, which give this incredibly simplistic view of the. the, the 
and what people are dealing with. Um, the, the, this phrase here, which is in every home report, sloping roofs were visually inspected with the aid of binoculars where appropriate. <laughs> Flat roofs were visually inspected from part of the house within the property and by safe and reasonable to do. So on a three meter ladder externally. That makes it sound as if they actually did that. But that's in every report. It doesn't actually tell you anything at all. It practically misleads you. And then you've got this fine picture of an Edinburgh New Town palace. And then, and then you, th this, this is an example of a roof for which there was a home report. Um, and as you can see, it's actually quite nuanced and complicated what you can say about this, because it was done in the 1980s, so it wasn't actually a knackered 100 year old roof, but it was still, nevertheless, a very troublesome roof with you know, all this flash band at the back of the cupola leaking into the common, in, into the common stair and various slates off, and then in, in the front parapet gutter, flash band, ponding water, you know, that sort of thing, which the, um, the surveyor noted that the, the roof was noted to be in fair order commensurate with the age and type of property, although some ongoing maintenance and repairs are likely to be required. Any flat roof sections have a limited life only and will require regular maintenance and eventual recovery. Well, what earthly use is that? And then um, here's another one where it's, it's evident that the guy, I won't take you through this in detail, but it's evident that the guy actually managed to get his head through the hatch and, and look out, which is quite rare. <coughs> and, um, and he said, no obvious significant defect noted in the visible areas inspected. You have to go through this like Philip the Philadelphian lawyer to work out what he actually did inspect or didn't inspect, and you probably won't find the answer. But ongoing maintenance should be anticipated to a roof of this age and type, which probably is reasonably legal, you know, makes him fairly bulletproof. And here's the actual roof in a very valuable property. You know, it's got it, its um, original slate work to the house, 